Morning students. So today we are gonna work on something you guys have asked me a whole lot about, which is how do I draw a tennis ball? How do I draw a basketball? How do I draw a baseball? All of these types of things. That's what we're gonna be working on today. So let's get started. Now, if we're talking about any of these types of things, obviously these are spheres, which are forms, but we have gotta draw them as shapes because we're drawing on a 2D piece of paper. So we're gonna start with shapes, obviously, and what are shapes? They are lines that connect to each other. That's all they are. So we got to start with our idea of line. So let's go to here. All right. So obviously, if I'm trying to draw a tennis ball, a basketball, anything like that, what I've got is a sphere. And a sphere on a piece of paper is going to be drawn like a circle. So the first thing is we got to be able to draw a circle. So people go, I can't draw a circle crazy but this is something I hear a lot yes you can draw a circle the problem is if you try to draw a circle perfectly like perfectly round with one line oftentimes you're gonna see every little wobble in that line there you go now anyone would look at that and say oh that's a circle for sure but if I was trying to be real critical about it, which you guys are way more critical about your own work than you are about anyone else's. Ooh, well, that's kind of flat on top. That's not exactly a circle. I like to sketch. So again, when we're talking about sketching, we're talking about using a bunch of soft, gentle lines to get us at the shape we're looking for. So let's sketch here. Let's sketch here. We're gonna sketch on this little guy because I'm gonna come back to this guy later. So if I'm trying to make a circle, instead of trying to draw it once perfect, I'm going to draw really gently and I'm going to sketch a bunch of little curved lines. And I'm just, again, I, I turn my paper, right? Because my hand naturally wants to move this way. It doesn't so much want to move that way. Look, you can see how awkward that is. Look at the, I'm like crunching my fingers together. That's not going to cut it. So instead of trying to do the whole thing in one go, I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to gently just sketch it and sketch it and sketch it until it starts to look kind of like a circle. I know what I'm going for. You know what I'm going for. Everyone knows what I'm going for, a circle. There's those sounds again. That's the sound it makes. You're gonna hear that a lot. That looks like a circle. That's a circle for sure. So there you go, it's that easy. <laughs> oh, it's that easy. I've practiced this a whole lot, right? I've been doing this since I was a kid. You guys still are kids, so I got a bunch of bunch of years on you on this. Okay, well, what do I do? Find something that's a circle, and you can make a circle, right? You put it down, you trace. Um, tape, cups, bowls, jars, whatever it takes. The only, I will give you one hint. If you're gonna trace something, Typically, you want to hold your pencil straight up and down when you trace it. Or at least get your point so it's straight against the edge. Especially if you're trying to trace something that's not totally flat on the bottom. Look at that, a circle. Now, again, you want to trace something, trace something, no big deal. However, this is something I notice a lot. If every single time you need to draw a circle, you're grabbing something to trace, you're never going to learn to draw a circle. So try to draw a circle, sketch it out. Look, those are both circles. That one I traced, that one I drew. They're good, they're both circles. We're fine, right? Cool. So if we're gonna draw any sort of basketball, tennis ball, soccer ball, whatever, of course, we're gonna start with a circle. So, we good on that? <laughs> Let's move on. So what I'm gonna do here, is we're gonna talk about levels right because <laughs> there's really easy ways you can make all these things and then there's ways that are going to look better so we're going to start with the simplest possible way you can do it of course we have to start with a circle because these are all circles so you've sketched out a circle you're good you you can make circles cool let's go so tennis ball basketball soccer the only one that's weird is football right football is not a circle obviously so let's start with a circle now again, you notice that one has a little lopsided here. That's because I just drew it in one go, right? If I wanted it to be nicer, I would have sketched it out. But for the time being, hey, it's level one. We're starting with the easiest way we can do it. Making sure I put an extra paper back there because I'm using Sharpie. Don't want it to go through to my desk. All right, so yeah, let's just start with a circle for each of these. 
Now, once you've sketched out enough of those the way I showed you, you're going, oh, but you're just, you're doing it the first try. Again, I've had a whole ton of practice. And again, these aren't perfect circles, but they're close enough to play a ball. Get it? <laughs> All right. Uh, there we go. Terrible. Sorry. Oh, I apologize for that. Okay. So here's our tennis ball. This is the only one I have uh, offhand in my house. So here's what we're going to do. Now, you notice a tennis ball has two sections. So I'm going to trade, and most like basketballs, baseballs all follow the same pattern. So if I were to trace this line around, I notice that the actual shape of it ends up kind of looking almost like a little peanut shape. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And then the extra space here is actually the exact same shape again. So what I mean by peanut shape is if I could imagine like opening that up, I would get a shape kind of something like that. Uh-oh, <laughs> I'm hitting my keyboard. I'm sorry. I'm new to all this uh, video stuff. Let's move the keyboard over there. So like a peanut shape, right? So if I were to open this up, like cut right on the seams and open it, I'd get something like that, a little peanut shape. We can save that for later because we can give him a little monocle and a, and a top hat. So, and he can be the baby from the commercial, the baby nut. Everyone loved it, right? I don't know. We'll put that over there. That's the shape it would be. But when you wrap that shape around, this sphere, this ball, depending on how you're looking at it, really all you're going to see is the little curved sides of it. So, and a baseball uses the exact same layout, and then a, uh, a basketball uses the same layout too, but it has some extra lines. So, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so level one tennis ball couldn't be easier. I'm going to add a curve here. I'm going to add a curve here. I got it. I'm done. Level one, you're good. Level one baseball, softball. Same thing. That's it. I'm good to go. So for a basketball, now, by the way, you could turn, obviously, it's going to look different from different views. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we kind of do some more advanced stuff. But we want to keep it simple at first. So, I mean, this way I could turn it this way, right? So maybe for my basketball, I'm going to turn it this way. It's the same thing. There's two curves, right? Now I've just turned it a different way. Now, basketball has some extra lines. You got a perimeter, not a perimeter, almost like an equator. If you imagine the equator, oh, look, this has one. There's a little line right there going right through it, like the equator on the globe, right? So that goes all the way around. And then a basketball actually has another one that would go perpendicular at a 90 degree angle around this way. So if I want to make this look like a basketball, uh-oh. I took out my little placement. I'd add one line straight across. Then I'd add one line top to bottom. I think most people would look at that and say, hey, that's a basketball, right? <clears throat> okay. So level one, the easiest way to do it, that's what we're looking for. Would people be able to identify what it is? Soccer balls are really complicated. They're complex. They have a pattern of hexagons and pentagons. So if we're talking level one, we want to, you know, I teach kindergarten through fifth grade. So how could we make something look like a soccer ball without being able to draw those complex shapes? You can still do it. Level one, what I'm going to say is you're just going to add some spots. And what we're going to do is we're going to space our spots out and then connect them just using lines. So I'm leaving a decent amount of space. I'm just going to add some little spots and then each of these are going to be connected, you know, something like this. Okay. Now, does that look perfectly like a soccer ball? No, it doesn't. But I think most people looking at that would be able to tell that's a soccer ball. Football. I don't have a football here, but um, let's go over like the basic easy way to do this. So. A football is pointed on both ends. It's a round shape, but it's pointed on both ends. So um, if I'm gonna make my football, really what I need to do is start with something that's slightly pointy on an end. 
Um, I've showed a lot of you how to draw eyes and how to draw leaves using the same shape, eye shape, leaf shape, whatever. You're, when I say eye, I mean like your eye. Same basic idea. So if I start with two points, here's one end of my football. <clears throat> There's the other end of my football. Cool. All I'm going to do is connect them with two curves. I'm going to do like what I like to call the rainbow curve or the frowny face curve. And then I'm going to do the smiley face curve. And that's going to give me the basic shape I want. Now, again, when I do curves, you see me move my paper all the time. I'm going to turn and I'm going to do you. You don't need to turn your paper if you don't want to. But again, I like drawing better this way. I'm going to curve like that. Cool. Again, like a frowny face, like a rainbow, however you want to think of it. And then I'm going to do another one like this. Now, what you're going to notice is, oops, my two curves weren't perfect. This one's a little flatter than that one. Hey, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's add the laces. So the easiest way to do football laces is just across the middle. You're going to do kind of a straight line. And you're going to add some little... They make that sound. There you go. It's a football. Anyone in the world would look at that and go, yeah, cool. That's a football. Got it. Okay. So if you just want to know like the absolute easiest way to draw any of these, you're done. You're done. But let's level up. Let's take it. Let's take it. Let's take it a little further. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with my, uh, with my basic shapes again. For now, I'm still just going to kind of approximate a circle the best I can. Again, if you want to trace, trace. Grab something that works, right? So how can we make these things look a little bit more 3D? So a little bit more 3D. What am I talking about? Well, here's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> So when we use, so I have all sorts of scrap papers just kind of everywhere. Let's say I draw a circle. Now on, on anything flat, paper, canvas that you're painting on, anything like that, the best we can do to make a sphere is, is approximate it. Approximate means you're getting close to it with a circle because if something's flat a sphere if I was gonna smash this flat like a pancake well it would turn into a circle right in real life we know it's not a circle but hey and I've showed this actually several times so those of you especially in the older grades are going yeah I've seen this guy do this of course you have so a circle is flat Wow I think we all knew that, right? A circle is flat, a sphere is not flat. So if I was to take this circle and pick it up and turn it, well, if I turn it, that doesn't look like a uh, circle anymore. That looks like an oval, right? If I turn my sphere though, it looks like a circle no matter how I turn it, okay? Now, if I turn this completely sideways, it actually just looks basically flat, like a line, right? All you can really see at this point is a line. And again, that's because the circle is flat. We call flat things two-dimensional. Here's why. Again, I know those of y'all in the older grades already know this. A dimension. Well, a dimension just means a way you can measure something. That's really all it is. So a lot of times we hear dimension and we think about like going through portals to different, like, different worlds and stuff. Well, that's like a cartoon idea of what a dimension is. But when we talk about 2D and 3D, two-dimensional and three-dimensional, we're just talking about how you can measure something. So my circle is about two inches long. If you want to get really into it, mathematically, this is our x-axis or our horizontal line. Since it's a circle, yeah, it's roughly two inches high. If you want to get into the math of it, we would call this the y-axis or the vertical. Okay. Well, I could measure it some weird third way, but it's just a combination of how high and how long. That's it, height and length, right? If I were to take this circle and try to measure it this way, from the perpendicular side. So in other words, instead of measuring it like this, I'm gonna take my ruler and hold it up and down and measure it like this. 
Well, if I try to measure it that way, there's, there's nothing to measure. It's, it's flat. That's why we say a circle has two dimensions. It's 2D, right? So I could say two inches high, two inches long, and then as far as, well, how deep or how wide is it, it isn't. There's nothing there, right? Nothing to measure. So we call it 2D. It has two dimensions. How high is it? How long is it? Cool. Well, my sphere here is 3D. My sphere has three dimensions because I could go, okay, how long is it? Looks like about two and a half inches. I could go, okay, how tall is it? Also about two and a half inches. But I could also go, how deep is it? How wide is it? And I could measure down this third way. In math, we call this the Z axis. This means I'm going to and from, close and far, right? And you can see my roller is getting closer to the camera, right? So this is my third dimension, my Z axis. How deep, how far is it, how close is it? And of course, if I turn everything, well, it's still about two and a half inches because this sphere is perfectly three-dimensional in all ways. So yeah, that's the third dimension. Now, the artist's problem is how do I represent those three dimensions? If you're working with sculpture, it's easy. You just roll something into a sphere, you've got it. But on paper, there is no third dimension. Paper is flat, it's two-dimensional. So we have to try to make this look 3D on a 2D piece of paper. Is this too technical? No. You get it. And already, just using curved lines has helped. But we, we can go a little further. We can go a little further. So level two. Well, there's certain angles that it makes more sense to draw it. And if I turn these angles, I'm going to start to see things that make it look a little more 3D. And I'll show you. Once we get to the basketball, it'll kind of help. So, tennis balls and baseballs basically look the same, right? They've got two little curved lines. Well, I can make it look immediately a little bit more three-dimensional, a little bit more like a sphere. Whoa, 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 what? We're going from shape, which is flat, to form, which is three-dimensional, right? So if we look at this up at the top here, this looks like two spheres because two things. Number one, I use a little curved line to show you that it's three-dimensionally round. And number two, you see some shading. If you look at the blue sphere where it's lighter and it's darker in certain places, that's called shading. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But we can even just use the lines. If you notice the equator line on the green sphere is curved. Well, that's going to help us too. So let's get back to, okay. So how do we apply this? I already have curved lines. So how could I make it look more round? There's a couple things you can do, right? So the first thing is if we change up those lines so they're not so equal. So maybe this line curves out a whole lot. And maybe this line curves less. It's Imagine turning it, right? So I've drawn it from an angle that's very simple to think of. If I turn it a little bit, you see this one gets a little smaller, this one gets a little bigger. So it's just a different angle. That in and of itself helps make it look a little bit more 3D. I can do the same exact thing with my baseball. Cool, right? All right, I can do the same thing with my basketball. So I started with my basketball, I had the curves on different axes, different angles. So maybe I'm gonna make this one a little bigger and this one a little smaller. Well, what do I do with my straight lines in this scenario? Here's what. So if you think about the straight lines on a basketball, if you're looking at them spot on, right from the front, they just look like a cross, like a plus, right? So if I wanna make this look a little bit more three-dimensional, again, where do I start? The same place as I started the first time. So I'll put little dots for where I'm starting. But if, if I imagine tilting this just slightly, like check that line out, see how that looks straight right now? Looks totally straight. If I tilt it just a little, we start to get more of that curve, right? So I'm gonna take these straight lines and I'm gonna curve them just a little. Nothing crazy, just a little bit. And immediately it looks more 3D, right? It looks more curved. So I already did that with the lines that were curved to start with. Well, I'm gonna do this with the lines that were not curved to start with. Uh-oh, uh-oh, that's starting to look kind of more like a form, right? Kind of less 
like a circle, kind of more like a sphere. That's what we're going for. All right, we're doing okay. We're doing all right. Now for the soccer ball. Here's what I'm going to show you for level two on a soccer ball. Because we know they don't have just circles that are connected with lines. So what I'm going to show you here is a little technique you can use if you're trying to get closer at the actual shapes on a soccer ball. So a real soccer ball is made out of pentagons, five-sided shapes, and hexagons, which are six-sided shapes. So roughly, a if you're drawing a hexagon, if you imagine like I'm going to draw something that looks like a house, and then I put a little V-shape on the bottom of it, Cool, so that's a hexagon, right? It has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. A pentagon is gonna have five sides. So I might tilt these sides in a little bit more. Still give it a roof like a house. And then this time I'm just gonna connect the bottom. So that's a pentagon, right? So an actual soccer ball is a combination of these two shapes. Well, again, let's take it one step at a time. We're going from circles at level one. Let's ignore the pentagons for now. We're gonna focus on these hexagons for now. All right, so a way you can make a pattern out of hexagons, which uh, by the way, a bee's honeycomb is exactly this, right? So how can I do that? Here's how. I'm gonna start basically by drawing a series of kind of straight lines. Now technically, if you want it to look really realistic, you could curve these lines out more. But that's kind of more of a level three thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm going to start with pretty close to just straight lines. Right across the middle, all about the same height. All right, so you can turn these into a series of hexagons just by adding a zigzag to it. So if I go up and down like a roof, up and down like a roof. And again, notice my roof is kind of shallow. It's not sticking up too much. Cool. And I'll go ahead and do the extra little outline there. Cool. Next, I'm gonna do the opposite down at the bottom. So almost like V shapes, but instead of a V like this, we're gonna have our V really wide like that. Cool. So straight line down up. A zigzag is what I'm talking about. Look at that. And then at the top of each little point, we can make another straight line up, up, up. At the bottom of each point, we can make another straight line down, down, down. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to do the same thing, my little zigzaggy. And you can repeat that, you know, for as much room as you have. And that's at least closer to looking like a soccer ball, maybe. And then, of course, you're just going to fill in, you know, every now and then fill in some black spots. And on a soccer ball, no two black spots are going to touch each other. So make sure none of the two black spaces you're making are going to touch each other okay that's i mean anyone would look at that and call it a soccer ball right it's a soccer ball cool that's level two i get the idea it looks a little bit closer to reality we're not quite there yet but hey okay okay let's talk about the football so if we want to make this football a little bit more realistic, there's a couple things we can do. I'm going to start for level two, same basic shape. So I'm going to start with my two dots. Let's see if we can make them a little bit more even this time. Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> They're less even. That's okay. All right, so one of the things uh, that uh, makes a football look like a football is they tend to have little stripes toward the ends. So I can add some stripes. Those would be white. Typically on a standard football, the other spaces would be uh, brown. And let's zoom in on this guy for a minute here. I could draw the laces like that, and I mean, that's the right lines, but in real life, the laces are more of a shape because they're white. So um, here's the story. I'm going to sketch it out with a pencil first, just 
so you can see what I'm getting at. And I'm trying to curve the laces since the ball's actually round. Same way we kind of curved our straight lines on the basketball. I'm going to take that little straight line for the lace and I'm going to curve it a bit. Now, instead of putting it right in the middle, because if it was in the middle, it would be kind of straight. Like that doesn't look wrong. But if I move it more over to the side, if I imagine a line that still connects to the points, but it curves up toward the top. So something like that. And then I can add my little laces in here. Okay, so that, that looks a little bit better. And what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna trace around them. Now, since I'm drawing so small, there's not a whole ton of space for these details, but generally, there's some laces and they look kind of uh kind of more 3d right for sure for sure all right where'd i put my eraser uh oh <laughs> everything i have is just in big bags big bags of crayons which i'm on, i'm only using just a minute big bags of pencils all right, let's erase out. Okay, now since I used the Sharpie, some of those laces are getting stuck together, but hey, that looks all right. Now, speaking of which, if the laces have some thickness on a football, well, on a tennis ball, again, it's not really a black line. In fact, on a, on a tennis ball, it's a white line here, right? So what I need to do here with my tennis balls, I need to actually give my line some thickness, especially if I'm about to add some color. So, there we go. And I might do the exact same thing actually on my, uh, on my baseball here. Okay. Um, yeah, what else can we do though? What else can we do? What else can we do? We've made them look a little more round. Not bad, but if we want to go from line, which we use curved lines to make shapes, circle. If we want to go from shapes to forms, spheres, so from a curve to a circle to a sphere. Well, how can we make it really look more like a sphere? Now, part of that's going to be shading. Part of it was the lines we just added. But there's a couple other things you can do. And I'm going to show them to you right now. So, <clears throat> first of all, skipping back to my little... My little guy right here. Without actually drawing any lines on it, that does not look like a sphere at all. It doesn't look 3D, it looks flat. Okay. Couple things I can do really to make it immediately look more 3D. The first thing is I can draw a little shadow. So if we imagine my tennis ball sitting on a table. Uh-oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. You might actually even be able to see it. See how it casts a shadow? Yes, you see. Now here's the weird part though. My shadow right now, you're looking down on it from my camera. My shadow really, if I was looking forward at it, wouldn't be that long, or it wouldn't be that much like an oval. Unfortunately, I don't really have a way to show you this right now, so I'll show you here. So let's imagine we're looking at this not from the top, but from the side. Well, if you're looking at it from the side, so if I scoot back from my desk and, you know, get down and look at it, well, I can see the edge of my desk and I can see the shadow. And I'm gonna show you what these things look like. The edge of my desk is a straight line. So all I need to do for that, there we go, is add a horizontal line. Cool, so I can see here's my ball, here's my desk, I'm good to go. Now for the shadow, from this angle, Really, and I wanna show you what people will do wrong. What they'll do is they'll make these huge ovals and it ends up not looking right. So, what, what I'll see people do a lot is they start down here and they make like a big oval for the shadow. And then even if you fill it in, it, it just doesn't quite look right. Something's off. And what's off is it's too round. Since our desk is flat, the shadow will be pretty flat. Let me show you what I mean. So if I start right here, I'm gonna try actually not to turn the paper. 
So you'll see what I mean. Instead of coming down like a curve immediately, when I start, I want to start with a pretty flat line. Pretty flat. And then somewhere up higher, I'm going to make another pretty flat line. The only place I'm really going to start to see that curve show up is at the very end. Yeah? So maybe something like this. Now there might be a little bit of curve in that flat space, but for the most part, it's going to be pretty flat because it's sitting on a flat surface. A shadow is a shape. A shadow is not 3D. It's not a form. It's where light's not hitting a flat surface. So a shadow is flat. It's a shape, right? But remember how I took my uh, this? Check it. It's the same thing. Look. Now, if I'm looking from the top, it looks like a circle, right? But the more I turn it, it flattens out just like that. So a shadow is a flat shape. That's a flat shape. Look at that. I've got it. Do you believe it? Of course you do. Because why wouldn't you? I don't know. <laughs> so that starts to look way more 3D just with a little bit of a shadow, yeah? Yeah. Yes. So. Let's take our level two shapes. Shapes, they're not shapes, they're forms. We're gonna take them from looking like shapes to looking like forms. So I'm gonna add a little horizon line, horizontal line, again, left to right. Uh, where should we be? If I put it, I feel like if I put it right on the tip of the football, right at the point, it's not gonna look right. So maybe I'll put it uh, a little higher, a little lower. Let's do a little higher. And we'll put that one right there, right there. Okay. So now it kind of looks like each of those little sports items is sitting on a table or something. And let's use the tricks we just learned. That isn't going to cut it. We want it to look kind of flat. Cool. Okay. So let's do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make them go the other way, but same idea. So kind of flat, curved at the end. The little Bob Ross sounds are back. All right. Flat, flat curved at the end so again those shadows are not dipping down like a smile curve not they're going straight across here i'm gonna try one without turning the paper straight across straight across curved at the end okay hey these are starting to look like forms these are starting to look like spheres all of these things other than the football are spheres right Okay. Now, how would I do my football one? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Let's figure it out. It's kind of a different shape. I feel like it should come to more of a point at the end because the actual football comes to more of a point at the end. So let's try out maybe, uh, maybe I'll use two kind of little curves. A curve here and a curve here. It's still not going down below where the football started. I just drew on my desk. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> this is why you need a placemat. You need some other paper down underneath. Newspaper? Whatever you've got. All right. Now, see, the look at the difference, though, right? These look a lot more 3D than these. And we're just at level two. We're not even at level three. Let's add some color. All right, what are we going to need? Orange for a basketball. I think kind of this yellowish greenish color is best for a tennis ball. We're going to need some red for the laces on a baseball. Soccer ball is just black and white, so that's pretty easy. And we're going to need some brown for our football. Cool. And again, I like to put an extra sheet. I keep taking it out. I don't know why, but I like to have an extra sheet under there just so you're not picking up as much texture from the desk when you color. We're going to talk about how you can use texture to your advantage uh, later. My voice cracked. To your advantage later. All right, so uh, baseballs tend to be red, uh, red lace and white ball, and that's it. So I think if you were to draw this, Anyone in the world would look at that and go, oh, cool, baseball. Awesome. If it's a softball, uh, softballs normally are like kind of a yellowish color. Sometimes they're like almost yellowish greenish. 
like a tennis ball might be uh, for a tennis ball. Again, this is why we made those lines thick, so I can actually leave those white spaces. Now, when I say made the lines thick, that's actually not exactly what I mean. What I mean is I use two lines for each line. I use two lines for each line. Whatever this thing is called. Is that a line? Uh, I don't, a seam? It's a seam. It's a seam. That's where the parts go together. So I use two lines for each seam. One here, one here. Cool. Like, this is looking pretty good. This isn't looking too bad. All right, let's do our basketball. The little seams on our basketball are going to be black. It took me a minute to find that color. The seams on our basketball are going to be black, and the rest of the basketball is going to be orange. Pretty good. Just color neatly and you're going to be fine. Yeah. Soccer ball is done. It doesn't have color. It's black and white. That's nice. <laughs> uh, football. So we'd have a little bit of brown here. A little bit of brown here. Even when coloring, I don't know. I just want to move. I want to move the way my hand wants to move. I don't want to fight with my hand. So if my hand wants to move this way, I'm gonna turn my paper and let my hand move that way. I'm just gonna listen to the way whatever you're drawing with wants to work. So if my crayon wants to work this way, just listen to it. Let it work that way. As long as you're not scribbling. It's going to be all right. I have to take a little more time with this one because it's got those little gaps. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So uh, that's a little bit, just a little bit there for you about how to go from a shape to a form. Now, already, these, these look relatively 3D, right? Um, we can do better. We can we can take it we can take it to level three. We can take it that one further step, yeah, and and really make them look three dimensional. And you know what that step is. We already talked about it. It's value, right? Because really, to make something look three D, it's not going to be the same color throughout. It's going to change values because the way you show form is with changing values. Again, look at that blue sphere right there. It's not all the same value of blue, right? We see light, we see dark, we see in between. So it's all about the value. So we're going to talk about just a couple other little techniques you can use to make your spheres look more realistic. And we're going to talk about how to use value to actually really make these things look pretty good. That's going to be next time because I think this one is long enough. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just spent, just spent 40 minutes. That's a whole art class drawing spheres tennis balls baseballs basketballs all that so uh next time we're really gonna level that up take it up to the next level add our shading and uh yeah and then next time you know how do i draw a soccer ball it's right there you know you've tried it you've done it so again uh you know just because you're at home that doesn't mean you can't make art find some stuff you got crayons you got pencils do whatever you need to do uh wash your hands go wash your hands right now <laughs> Do it before you make art, do it after you make art, because you're touching these crayons all the time, right? So uh, stay safe, stay clean, make art. Go play outside, too. It's super nice outside today. It's like almost too hot, but not quite there. So yeah, uh, have fun. See you next time. Later.